It is prediction time. Prediction time. We have a title fight and a number one taking on a number seven right here on the Double RT Boxing Show, the Ready Ready Talk Boxing Show. I'm your host, Mr. A, and this is what we're talking about today, folks. Now, we're talking Herberto Ramirez Zerto taking on uh, Romar Angulo. And then, which I think is, uh, even though it's the headliner, I believe the co-main event is going to take the is going to take the the show. That's uh, Alex Sacido and Leonardo Zap. What was his name? Zappa Vinga. Zappa. You know, Leonardo Z. I do believe that's going to steal the show right there. Now we're going to talk about the headliner first, cause I'm not. I, I can't really talk much about that one, cause uh, Ro- Romer and Gulo. There's not much to uh, see on them on the internet, you know? and it's, it's still like Age Fight 2014. The quick little highlights. So based on that stuff, you know, he, he has. He's more of a, a a gap controller jabber who tries to set you up to overreach and then he'll counter you. That's for what I'm getting on his last his all those fights. Now he does seem to have a pretty decent come forward game when he wants to. He could work the nice body. He got he has a nice one two. I just don't think. He's gonna be able to deal with the the come forward aggression of uh, Herberto Ramirez. Now, saying saying that you know, they, they don't have the reach of Romer. But he's 34 years old. He's and taking on a younger 27. It, the competition he's been fighting definitely ain't on uh, Zerto's level. So six two and a half. With the shorter man being Angulo at 6'1. He's 23 and 0, 20. But his, uh, like I said, speaking of the resume, you know, Zerto don't have the greatest ones, but he just recently fought our. Oh, here it is. Here it is right there. You hear it? I don't know if you guys can hear that loud ass chop. Like I said, you you previous and previous subscribers, you know what that is. You guys who follow that show, you know what that is. But you new viewers, hopefully you become new subscribers. The studio for the Double RT Boxing Show is close to an army base training facility. So you get a lot of uh, chopper practice flights. You get a lot of little uh, parachuters going around over here. So that was them coming in for their little practice flight. Now it's going back to Angulo's. He fought his last records has been he's Cato someone in the first round, Cato wants someone in the second, Cato in the second, Cato in the first, Cato in the first. Had a UD in the eight rounders. Uh Cato's someone in the fourth. Now Everett Barrio, that's his last fight. Well, let's like I said, you can check this guy's record out. And before he fought Angulo Romero or Romer Angulo, he fought someone who was seven and twelve. He beat him. He lost to Sean Monahan, McGonahan. Fought someone who was zero and eight. Fought someone who was one and twelve. Lost to lost to Alexander Berrio, who was thirty-seven and seven. Lost to someone who was 16 and 2. He won someone who was 1 and 10. Beat someone who was 0 and 5. Beat someone who was 5 and 30. Oh, he lost to someone who was 28 and 1. So you kind of see who he beats and who he loses against. Any type of decent record, he loses. So at 37 and 0, I think Herberto Ramirez, he's gonna his 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 aggression is gonna be too much for him. That jab behind the jab. I don't think Romero's going to have any answers to it. He's going to try and uh, body attack Romero, I mean, um, Ramirez, and that's going to be right into Herberto's wheelhouse. So getting, between, getting past that jab, and then once you get into that jab, 
you want to get into a fucking brawl and Angulo I, I don't think we'll have enough to go for this fight so I'm going with the champion Ramirez the WBO champ to remain champion now I think it's going to be a pretty easy fight for uh, Ramirez as, as that now going to what I, I think is going to be the the stiller like I said this is a uh, a good fight for Alex for Alex Sacido. He's number one by the WBO, and Lenny uh, Leonardo Zapivaga. Zap. I'm, I, I gotta pronounce it like that Golden Boy announcer. He pronounces it real slowly, so he gets it. Zapavina. <laughs> He's number seven by the WBO. So Alex is number one. Leonardo is number seven, but Alex is also number two for the WBA, and of course that that fight is taking place in the WBSS tournament. So this is an extreme. So basically, Alex is setting himself up for a champion out of that tournament, whether it's a WBO belt or the WBA belt. He set himself up for that fight if he wins. Now, if Leonardo wins this fight, he set himself up for probably one more fight and then a title shot. Now, this is a tough fight. I think it's going to be a very entertaining fight. You got you got Alex who's coming in at 27 and 0 with 17 knockouts. You got Leonardo who's 37 and 3 with 27 knockouts. His last loss was to Sergey Lipinitz, and you know he gave Sergey Lipinitz some problems here and there, but Sergey beat him with movement, movement and um, popping his shots. Now, out of his three losses, he's been KO twice, and his, his last loss was a KO to Sergey Lipinitz in the eighth round, and before that, he lost two back-to-backs, and that was in 2011. So from 2011 all the way. For 2016, he's been on a pretty cool winning streak. Now you can say who has he fought. His his record looks a, the people he's fought looks a lot better than a uh, fucking Angulo. Now, like I said, two orthodox fighters. And this is where it might come down to. You got a 72 inch reach for Alex taking on a 67 and a half Leonardo. And a 5'10 frame versus a 5'6 frame. Now footwork, Leonardo's gonna come forward. He's gonna come forward with the jab, with the left hand jab, with a over with a crazy ass overhand right. And and once he gets inside, he's he's crazy with the left hook, whether it's up to the bot down to the body, up to the head, double to the body. Leonardo's crazy with his left hook. He's a little like I said, he's a little wild and hard and hard thrown with that right hand. But he's a come forward fighter and his defense is just basically bob side to side and catch with his glove and he's going to get hit. Now as far as Alex, the dude is good. He has, he has a little sugar on his feet. He, has a little, you know, he knows how to get in, pop, 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 exit on angles, turn you, turn you. And I think that's going to give Leonardo trouble, much like Sir Sergey Lipinitz. That's how Sergey Lipinitz was able to avoid Leonardo's power. Hit some shots, hit some shots, and move him around the ring. Turn him, turn him, turn him. And Alex, with the reach of more than four inches, about three and a half inches, he's going to be able to jab, 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 and turn him. You know, so that's going to be a real... The challenge is going to be getting inside Alex's jab. Now, the thing is, Alex fights inside, and his defense is poor. It's like I said, at least Leonardo catches some, and he, he on the forearms, he catches some, and he moves some little head movement, you know? Bob's a little bit, you know, but he's a come, he's doing all that coming forward. Alex is in the in the frame in front of you to get hit. He takes shots, unnecessary shots that he should not take. And both of these guys get hit. Now, better arsenal and offense, I go with the punch selection and variation of Alex. But the power, the way they delivered and they just look hard, look like they uh, deliver more damaging effect, is with Leonardo. Now, I don't know if Alex, as, as as all the unnecessary shots he gets hit with, if he could take that from 
Leonardo. Like I said, 37 with 27 knockouts. 27 in with 17 knockouts. <coughs> These guys have about the same knockout ratio, probably about a 65 to 68 ratio. So they got they got the the, the, the mustard on the punch to do it. But I was saying just the, the delivery is looking like Leonardo's punches does more damage. Like it looks like Leonardo's punches can knock you out earlier than Alex's uh, long ration of punches could wear you down, and that's how he gets his knockouts. It's, if, if that makes sense, you know. Now, like I said, if if Alex wins this fight, I think he's just going to be picking him apart, picking him apart, turning him, moving him, keeping him at bay, keeping him with the jab, and he's going to probably win an easy uh, decision. And But I got... Leonardo can't win this on the a boxing decision. He 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 has to get some knockdowns, and where where it's obvious the points are going. I, th I think it's gonna be an action-packed fight. There's gonna be a lot of toss-up rounds. Like, oh, who got this fight? Who got that round? I think they're both gonna be doing damage. Oh man, like I said, I know movement gives Leonardo problems, and because I want to say he's gonna upset it and knock Alex out. That's where I originally was going to go pick on this one. I'm thinking, dude, he couldn't catch Sergey Lipinis, but Sergey Lipinis was fighting from the outside doing some nasty shit. And Alex ain't as, like I said, as, as good as his movement is, I haven't seen him be that outside fighter. But I know he's a better, I know he has better feet to give Leonardo problems. Oh, this is tough, folks. This is a tough pick for me, Mr. A. This is the Double RT Boxing Show. I'm your host, Mr. A. If I pick Alex, it's a comfortable, safe bet that he's going to outbox him. Because Leonardo can be outboxed pretty easily, but the Alex gets hit so damn easy. I'm going to go with it. You know, I've been on a pretty good streak. I've been getting on uh, season two, Double RT Boxing, Mr. A here. I've been... In season one, I was like, I was a go getter, man. I was a, I, I pick upsets like, like I didn't care. You know, I, I've been a little more wiser, you know, a little more rational on these, on uh, this season with my picks. But I'm going back to season one on this one, even though I think Alex is gonna outbox him. I think he just gets hit too much, and it's gonna get stunned and stopped, and it's gonna be a shocker. I'm going with Leonardo. Zappi Vagana. <laughs> Fuck that name up, but oh man, I still have time to change it. Do I want to change it? Do I want to change it? Alex Acido, the number one in, in WBO, number two in the WBA. Is he going to get upset? It? God damn, what a fucking pick. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck it. It's only a pick. You tuned in for entertainment. I hope you were entertained. We're going with Leonardo on the upset. He's going to stop him. He's going to stop him in the late rounds. He's going to hit his ass too many times. Like I said, but Leonardo gets cut. He, he gets busted up, too. He, he cuts easy. Can, can the fight get stopped on his cuts? Oh, man. This is, I, <laughs> hope you're entertained. Leonardo on the upset. Late, late round stoppage. Please, again, new viewers, thumbs up. Uh, hope you subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Obviously, you see I'm having a hard time. Like, like, Herberto Ramirez is going to whitewash him. This is a hard fight for me. Leave a comment down below, guys. And please, you know, I, I don't get much communication, but when I do, I answer you guys pretty fast. But I'm, I'm very interested to see what the audience has for this fight. The outboxing and fancy feet of Alex, the nice offensive punch selection. Or the power of Leonardo with the weak defense of Alex getting hit too much. Where are we going to go with this one, folks? Let me know. I'm your host, Mr. A. Thank you for your time and support. It went a little long with that little rant, but I don't know who to pick. But we're going Leonardo. Thank you for your time.